narco tank is an umbrella term created by the media for the improvised armored cars used by modern drug cartels in Mexico. SUVs and commercial vehicles serve as the chassis for narco tanks. These chassis are then modified with armor, turrets, mounted weapons, and occasionally even James Bond-esque gadgets. These vehicles are mostly seen in the Mexican states bordering the US, because these areas have become zones of intense conflict as cartels compete for drug smuggling routes. Created in illicit workshops, narco tanks often look like something from Mad Max and are well known for their exotic designs. For the local Mexicans, these weapons are a symbol of an ever escalating and ever deadlier inter-cartel war that has even involved the military and has been going on for over 10 years. Welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host, Logemon, and today I will be covering narco tanks. If you like what we do and want to see more, please consider hitting the subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. If you are already subscribed, please don't hit the subscribe button so you can continue not to miss a single video. If you'd like to contribute more directly, consider donating to our Patreon or PayPal, it helps us stay afloat. Crucial to understanding the existence of narco tanks is that only half of the income of Los Zetas, a prominent cartel with a fearsome reputation, comes from drug trafficking. The other half comes from activities against civilians and war with other drug cartels. This has created a desire for armored vehicles. Over the last 10 years, Mexico has seen high levels of violence due to competition between cartels. They compete for control of drug routes into the USA. Border areas are especially useful as they give shorter smuggling trips, which means that there is less time and opportunity for the smugglers to be intercepted by the authorities. Knowing the importance of this to a successful smuggling run, cartels are willing to fight for every single street in border areas. The escalation in fighting has reportedly led to increased military efforts against the cartels. It has also meant that a small arms race has begun between rival cartels, who want strong firepower from vehicles to allow them to perform fast and deadly mobile attacks and effective protection for their crews during these attacks. As well as this, the increased role of the military in operations against cartels may have meant that they have sought to protect their convoys. It is worth taking a moment to mention the broader context. More than just an arms race has come about as a result of cartel violence. Conservative estimates give a figure of 70,000 for those killed in cartel-related attacks between 2006 and 2012. Narco tanks are produced in underground workshops and improvised production lines which are hard to detect. Analysis of captured workshops by the military has shown that some vehicles had the suspensions modified to take up to 30 tons of weight, which allowed the vehicles to have armor between 5 and 25 mm or between 0.2 and 1 inches thick. This level of armor can withstand small arms fire and even 40 mm grenades. According to an article in Small Wars Journal by Robert J, narco tanks can be classified in five categories 1, 2, 3 early, 3 mature, and 4. Category 1 vehicles are hastily improvised with only minor modification. An example would be the use of ballistic vests inside of a delivery truck to provide protection for cartel hit squads, as seen in one incident on the 11th of July. 1979 at Dadeland Mall, Florida. Category 2 vehicles tend to be professionally armored SUVs using internal armor kits, ballistic glass, and bulletproof tires, all of which are common in Mexico. Since the late 1990s, middle-class civilians have begun purchasing these armor kits to protect themselves from kidnapping and general cartel violence. Furthermore, in recent years, these armor kits have become readily available at a low cost. Category 2 has therefore become the most common type of narco tank. Early Category 3 vehicles have improvised pillboxes or firing positions on the bed of a truck, are sometimes armored, and have been spotted around northeastern Mexico from about 2010. Mature Category 3 vehicles make up the bulk of the sensational narco tank photographs. They are usually, but not exclusively, 
work trucks with exterior armor, gun ports, air conditioning for passengers, external gun mounts, battering rams, and sometimes even small turrets. The key difference between Category 3 vehicles and Category 1 and 2 vehicles is that Category 3 vehicles are considered offensive weapons, whereas Category 1 and 2 vehicles are considered defensive weapons. Category 3 vehicles can be operated like gun trucks similar to those employed by the US during the Vietnam War. Category 4 is a predicted evolution of Category 3 and would be an improvised armored fighting vehicle with an anti-vehicular main gun, probably some form of AA gun, and possibly thicker armor. For various reasons, that will be explored later in this video, as this evolution has not happened. Analysis of photographs reveal that some weapons seen on narco tanks include personal weapons, mounted 50 cal snipers, mounted machine guns, and sometimes other heavy infantry or anti-tank weapons such as RPGs. Unconventional weapons are used on these vehicles too. Many of them have battering rams, perhaps to bust through gates, enemy vehicles, or even general traffic. Some vehicles reportedly have James Bond-style gadgets that throw nails or oil onto the road, presumably to help lose a tailing vehicle. Smaller narco tanks are generally based on SUVs and pickup trucks. They are easy to conceal and are known to feature very powerful V-10 engines, making them well suited for the type of combat they are involved in. These also often feature turrets that allow effective fire to be laid down on enemies. One vehicle, for example, had a turret designed for a sniper that could cover a 160 degree arc towards the front. These turrets can provide a crucial forward fire capability that most other gun trucks lack. Narco tanks based on SUVs tend to be light, but there are some heavily modified examples. Both heavy and light SUV narco tanks were made at roughly the same time, but only the lighter varieties are seen today. The heavier ones tend to be very conspicuous, such as the infamous examples of Monstro 2010 and 2011. Such designs are also rather short-lived, owing to certain inherent flaws such as being far too conspicuous, unreliable, and slow. Lighter SUV narco tanks tend to have internal armor kits or just small pillboxes mounted on the rear. Vehicles modified with internal armor kits are not blatantly cartel-related, save for all the firearms inside, meaning they cannot be seized without serious proof of criminal intent. They are also substantially lighter than those equipped with heavier external armor, which means that these light narco tanks can travel much quicker. These two advantages alone have meant that the chances of seeing the larger, more spectacular designs of narco tanks in the future are slim. The smaller vehicles based on SUVs tend to be stealthy and defensive weapons, usually to defend territory or protect drug shipments. They may still carry heavier weapons such as 50 cal sniper rifles, but rarely anything larger. There are reports of videos that show them to be operated in convoys of 10 to 20 vehicles, each carrying up to 5 men. This demonstrates that the lighter varieties are indeed becoming more and more common. Larger gun trucks are seen in fewer numbers, often alone or in small groups. These vehicles seem to be used exclusively as an offensive weapon against rival cartels. Narco tanks are far from indestructible and have not overwhelmed opposing cartels or the Mexican military. They are not often engaged by the military, but the military has been known to employ handheld anti tank weaponry against them, such as the RL 83 Blindy Seed Bazooka. Some photos exist of abandoned narco tanks having been severely damaged by RPGs fired from opposing cartels, and some knocked out vehicles have even been graffitied, daring Los Zetas to send more narco tanks to their doom. Two of the most famous narco tanks are known as Monstro 2010 and Monstro 2011. It is unclear whether or not they were made in the same workshop, but they do both share a very similar design although it could be the case that they are unrelated vehicles that just happen to look similar. These are the vehicles which really do look like they are pulled straight from Mad Max. 
Monstro 20 ton is the more crude looking version based on a large SUV. Supposedly, it could transport up to 19 or 20 men carrying assault rifles. It features a single turret at the front of the crew compartment for a sniper. All glass was removed from the vehicle and replaced with armor plating, although small vision slits with armored glass were added. The tires, a common weak point in narco tanks, were partially covered with a steel plate, and an ultra lightweight, bulletproof ballistic steel ring was added to each. The steel hull was 25 mm or 1 inch thick and angled upwards. The front of the vehicle featured a large steel pole 100 by 100 mm or 4 by 4 inches to smash through obstacles. And, rather shockingly, the grill was reportedly electrified with up to 700 volts. It also had nail dropping, oil slicking, and smoke screening devices to throw off pursuers, which would be necessary as it could only travel at a mere 40 to 50 kilometers or 25 to 31 miles per hour. Monstro 2010 also featured a satellite communication system for listening to police or military communications, perhaps one of the most inventive and ingenious devices ever attached to a narco tank. This meant that the vehicle did not have to rely on lookouts using mobile phones to keep it informed. Crucially, the lookouts could only do this once the authorities were in the process of carrying out a raid whereas tapping into the communication systems would have informed the vehicle of potential threats before they had begun to move. Nevertheless, Monstro 2010 was captured by authorities in Jalisco, May 2011. Monstro 2011 looked much more sophisticated than Monstro 2010. The key differences are that it featured two turrets and looked fairly well put together, even featuring a reinforced transmission. It is believed that two Monstro 2011 vehicles have been found, which look almost identical to each other. The first was found in Rancho San Juan, Coahuila, buried under tons of dirt. The other was found in Ciudad Mier, Tamaulipas, with its tires missing. Monstro 2011 was based on a Ford Super Heavy pickup truck. On average, its armor was 25 mm or 1 inch thick. The driver's seating area was totally unchanged inside, bar the addition of level 5 bulletproof glass. The nose of the vehicle was sharply pointed with a steel battering ram, showing a clear intention to smash through obstacles, though again, it could only travel at a mere 40 to 50 or 25 to 31 miles per hour. It could transport an estimated 20 people and it even featured semi-enclosed steel firing compartments. It does not seem to feature any gadgets like Monstro 2010, but it was, undoubtedly, a sophisticated and well-planned design, probably created using blueprints, which would explain the existence of two such vehicles. As previously mentioned, narco tanks such as the Monstros and other heavy gun trucks have been on the decline, seldom seen since 2012. This is perhaps owing to the fact that stealthy SUVs with internal armor are preferred by the cartels. The Mexican government states that at least 100 narco tanks have been seized so far, which has undoubtedly had a knock-on effect on narco tank production. Instead of getting bigger, as many commentators have speculated, they have actually gotten smaller and less conspicuous. The most recent reported sighting of narcotanks was in February 2015, when a narcotank factory hidden inside a winery was discovered by Mexican authorities near Nuevo Laredo, close to the US border. 13 vehicles were seized, but only 8 of them were narcotanks. The other 5 were in the process of being armored. Along with the haul of vehicles was a number of 50 cal bullets, bulletproof glass panels, and AK-47 magazines. This is only the second widely reported raid on a narcotank factory, and it is almost certain that plenty more illegal workshops are still in operation and are producing narcotanks to this very day. And with the comforting thought that cartel tanks are still in production, I leave you. This concludes another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. Thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing if you haven't already. 
Remember to aggressively debate your favorite improvised armored fighting vehicles in the comment section. And until next time, keep us in your sights.